Welcome everyone to the special meeting of the Bowling Green City Board of Education. Would you please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Kathy, would you take your role, please? Thank you. Joe Hart? Here. Tracy Obes? Here. Brian Myers? Here. Jenny Stewart? Here. Norman Gear? Here. I'd like to take this opportunity to recognize the members of the press that are uh, present. Uh, Clint Cole of the Morning Show, Jan Lachlan, Jan Larson McLaughlin of the Beach Independent News, and Marie Thomas Baird of the Daily Sentinel Tribune. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, at this time, we'll move into the personnel recommendations. Okay, under certificated personnel, we have three resignations. Um, an intervention specialist at Kenwood, a preschool teacher, and an art teacher at the high school. Item two, we have the employment uh, for the 2021-22 uh, school year. Uh, a reading specialist paid through ESSER funds, another reading specialist paid through ESSER funds, and then a Spanish teacher for the high school. Uh, item B, under support personnel, we have the retirement of a bus driver effective October 1st, 2021. Item two is the transfer um, slash promotion of Debbie Bennett, uh, who was a bus driver and who will be taking over as the secretary of the operations center uh, effective August 9th, and it will be a 60 day work day probation. Item three is the employment of Mike Ackley as a bus driver effective uh, 25th of this month. And that's it. Could we have a motion to approve the superintendent's recommendations? So moved. Second. Any discussion? I would like to say uh, congratulations and uh, well wishes to Terry Morris, who's driven us for the district for many years and certainly a, a loss to our, our fleet. But um, we wish her well on her retirement. Any further discussion? Uh, if not, can we go to the vote, please? Jill Carr? Yes. Brian Myers? Yes. Jenny Stewart? Yes. Tracy Hobes? Yes. Norman Gear? Yes. Uh, next, we have the approval of a memorandum of understanding between OPC, Chapter 311, and Lonely Green City Schools regarding bus driver pay and the addition of a secretarial position. Could we have a uh, Motion to approve that. So moved. Second. Uh, discussion. Would you call for the vote, please? Tracy Hobas? Yes. Jimmy Stewart? Yes. Jill Carr? Yes. Brian Myers? Yes. Norman Gear? Yes. Uh, next uh, topic is discussion related to facilities and the mean splits as proposed via the use of the ESSER funds. Uh, is there anyone who would like to start the discussion? Let me start. Okay. Um, last Friday, um, we met with Fanny and Howie. When I say me, uh, Angie Shaw, Joe Carr, and Ryan Myers, and began began having a conversation about uh, many splits. Um, we have reapplied, correct? Yeah, so our initial application for the ESSER money uh, was rejected and we've reapplied. I can't speak more of that, but um, we were looking at a proposed schedule and it became apparent that uh, for us to try to get this done, um, that we probably need to move ahead um, with decisions about this project. 
uh, before ESSER funds uh, might be available and to see if we can do it any other way. Um, because as we were all hoping sometime in the spring, uh, many of our classrooms would have that, that, uh, that improvement. And those mini splits will air condition those classrooms, but they are also manufacturing them now with ionization. Uh, which helps kill viruses. So it's a uh, dual purpose. And certainly at this time, we could use all the help we can get. And so um, the proposed schedule that you have in front of you was given to us. And that's, that was if we would do the, um, the meeting on the 17th of August, of August at our normal board meeting. And we just felt it was important that we tried to speed that process up and have this discussion sooner than later, um, because this is more of a time of the essence kind of thing. If we're going to try to have some things done by the spring. So that's kind of where we kick off, I suppose. So I guess the question I have, and I think of as someone, um, if we want to go ahead and use uh, district dollars what funds would they come out of and are we able to, um, and I, I know you sent this information, but I think it's important that we talk about it so everyone else knows. Um, are we able to pay those funds back? Um, I'm gonna say when the ESSER funds are approved. So I guess that's one for Kathy. Sure, yes, um, we do have pipeline money that's available that is unencumbered and unspoken for that we can utilize until we receive the application grant. Um, if the funds were, if the application was denied, then we would still use the pipeline and general fund to make up the difference. Okay. Good. No, go ahead. <clears throat> Can you talk about why the application was denied? Because it wasn't denied based on the principle of what we were asking for. That's correct. It was basically returned as a technicality because mm -hmm. if you recall, when they originally put the SR3 funding out, they didn't release 100% of the funds. So when that happened, they returned all the applications to all of the districts across the state and said, okay, now you need to resubmit, do some recalculations and resubmit. So it wasn't project-based, it was strictly funding. So we did the recalculations and resubmitted it last week. I think one of the reasons that we're, we have this in front of us and that we're, we've, we have this meeting is because I think we realize how important the air conditioning both is in terms of quality with the ionization mm -hmm. and the comfort level um, is for our students and looking at trying to target that spring date, um, having that into the warmer months of this upcoming school year, we need to act on that pretty quickly if we're going to do that. Last thing I want is for us to kind of kick that out and then now we're looking at fall of 2022, 2022 uh, before the students would reap the benefits of that. So, I guess the question I would have is can this uh, schedule be accelerated? Does anybody know? The sense I got from the Fanning and Howie people is that this, this is as accelerated as it can be. Under the circumstances, because they know we want these in sooner rather than later. Okay, so based on those, this is as aggressive as they can be. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, just from a federal fund standpoint, there are certain processes and procedures that you have to go through, and those, they just take time, unfortunately. And we asked the question in that meeting as well. Well, if we did. Get that approval because this this timeline is based off the August seventeenth board meeting. If we bump that up two weeks ahead of time, how much of that impact? And I think the I don't want to quote it, but I think the sense was every day counts with us. Um, so whatever you can do to get this moving is is going to benefit you. So when you're talking spring, best case scenario, I think of spring as April, May. What what were they? Is this showing possibly June? Did they give you any indication at all? Well, that, the June was for final completion of all of them. Right? They're going to be adding those 
basically room by room. And so it's uh, by the time they're getting into the buildings and doing this, it should be early on. But by the time they're completed with the whole project, it could be jammed okay. under this timeline. All right. Okay. Uh, do we know if uh, there will be just one construction crew going through each building, one building at a time, or will there be multiple crews? And will they start with the elementaries first? Those kinds of questions? Yeah, that we don't know that. Right. Right. Those, that those will come through the, the bid process. Okay. And then there's no issues getting reimbursed from the SR3 funds into for the pipeline and the general fund when going to be optimistic when that application gets approved, correct? Correct. There should not be any issues because they're allowing funds to be debited back to March of 2020. So once the ESSER funds come through and we pay back one of the funds, how much more, because we, we know that we don't have enough ESSER funds to cover this, I don't want to put you on the spot, but what are we looking at for the balance and which fund are you recommending? Once again, just to reiterate, which fund are you recommending to take it out? Sure. Um, the estimates for all three buildings provided by Fanning and Howie was roughly 3.9 million. Um, if we use 2.5 of the ESSER funding, because remember we have to hold 20% of that for learning loss, so that leaves 2.5 million left. Um, and then beyond that, it's around 1.4 million that we would have to take from another fund in-house. So currently there's 2.6 million in the pipeline that can be utilized or we have carryover in the general fund, either one. Okay. Is that, is that a decision we need to make now? Or can we? Uh, the decision that we're making now is to consider a resolution on number five, uh, which will uh, be doing something called a RFQ. <laughs> Francis, can you explain the whole request for quote? Request for quote. I think, Tracy, you're asking do we have to decide which fund it comes out of now? Right? Yeah. No. 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 Okay. Yeah. Worst, worst case scenario, doesn't get approved. There's still other things we can use that ESSER money for, and there's plenty of things, right? Correct. We can extend the temporary personnel or the new personnel positions that we've added. That would just extend those. Could be one option. Uh, is it correct that we could, we could extend that for as long as three years? The end of the ESSER funding is 2024. So... September of 24. Any further discussion? Would uh, Francis, would you read the resolution, please? Sure. Whereas, in accordance with the Ohio Revised Code ORC 153.65 through 73, Bowling Green City Schools is requesting qualifications from engineers for professional design services to assist in the planning, designing, and construction of HVAC system improvement improvements. Design services could include planning, programming, engineering, bidding, documents, and construction administration services. Resolved that the Bowling Green City Schools is hereby authorized to make public announcement and release of an RFQ for hiring of a professional design firm for an HVAC modification project with submissions due August 30th of 2021. Do we have to wait a month for the RFQs? Well, you, you have to advertise it and, and you get those back. And, yeah, you're probably okay, so if you have, have to, because we'll have to do like a long time. Yeah, because we'll have to also allow them in to look at the, the buildings in this case. Uh, I guess at this point we would need a motion to accept the resolution. So moved. I'll second. Uh, any further discussion on this? Could we have a vote, please? Joe Carr? Yes. Brian Myers? Yes. Tracy Hobes? Yes. Jenny Stewart? Yes. Norman Gear? Yes. 
At this point, we will go into executive session. Um, do I have a motion to go into executive session for the purpose to consider the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of a public employee? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Vote, oh, please. Jenny Stewart? Yes. Tracy Gomez? Yes. Jill Carr? Yes. Brian Myers? Yes. Norman Gear? Yes. Exit time. 515. Here we are now adjourned into executive session. Anybody expect that action to be taken? I don't. No action is expected to be taken. <laughs>